I'm Sasha Ndarte. I'm an assistant professor of finance at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. And I mainly work on topics related to macroeconomics and household finance. So in my research, moral hazard and liquidity refer to two key motives that people have for filing for personal bankruptcy. So personal bankruptcy, it's a legal process that allows households to discharge unsecured debt. So that would mainly be things like medical debt, credit card debt, personal loans, not things like mortgages that are secured by a property. Now these two different motives, the moral hazard motive, what that refers to is people filing for bankruptcy just because of the potential wealth gain that they get by reducing their debt. So it's essentially like the pure financial strategic motive. This contrasts with the, the liquidity effect, which is people having a lack of liquid wealth and that uh, leading them to want to file for bankruptcy. In particular, if people are not very well insured against bad states of the world, like wor worlds in which they lose their job or uh, lose a bunch of their wealth in the stock market or get a really large medical bill, that lack of cash on hand and lack of insurance can motivate people to file for bankruptcy. So my research exploits two different natural experiments, uh, that uh, one of which is going to isolate variation purely coming from this moral hazard incentive. The other is able to isolate variation working through this liquidity motive. And what I find is that liquidity is a much more powerful driver of US households' uh, decision to file for bankruptcy. They're about uh, four to five times more responsive to cash on hand in terms of their likelihood of filing than the payoff that they get from filing for bankruptcy. The reasons for this, there's a couple that this uh, that could be the case. So one would be uh, a lack of other sources of insurance. So in the US, households, uh, one uh, big reason that they file for bankruptcy is uh, they essentially use it like a, a really maybe arguably a bad form of health insurance. You get a big medical bill. If you don't have health insurance to cover that expense, bankruptcy becomes another way to deal with those expenses. Uh, it could also be things like uh, stigma associated with bankruptcy. If people feel ashamed or guilty for not being able to pay their personal debt, they might hold off filing for bankruptcy until they're in a really, really bad state of the world in which those small dollars matter a lot. Given uh, increases in consumer debt, this is an important question. What's gonna drive people to file for bankruptcy and how are those factors going to change? And it's, uh, I'll admit it's difficult to forecast, but uh, some hunches that I have is, again, related to the, the social safety net across countries. If we strengthen the social safety net, I would expect us to see fewer bankruptcies. And among the bankruptcies we would continue to see, they're more likely going to be due to this moral hazard rather than this liquidity or insurance motive. If we weaken our social safety nets, uh, then I would expect the opposite. So that's a very interesting question, and this is an area where it's, uh, it's always difficult to do cross-country comparisons because uh, there's so many things at the same time that differ across countries. So a couple data points on Sweden and the US. So in the US, personal bankruptcy is fairly common. About one in 10 households in the US file for bankruptcy at some point in their life. In a typical year, between half a million or even up to a million people uh, per year uh, seek debt relief through bankruptcy in the US. Now in Sweden, in past years, this number has been closer, uh, from some of the data I've seen, closer to around 500 or so people in the entire country. So it's a lot more rare in Sweden. Uh, one other thing that's different is that uh, in Sweden, when you file for bankruptcy, your name is published in the newspaper. It's not something that you can uh, do uh, very discreetly, whereas it's, uh, even though it's public record in the US, it's still more discreet uh, compared to that. So things like the stigma might be different across the countries. And, and I also suspect differences in the social safety net across the countries. For example, the fact that Sweden has a more generous social safety net, that could be one reason why we see so much fewer bankruptcies here compared to the US.